The following is a presentation of the Force Center podcast feed. Evening, everybody from the center of the galaxy. This is the Four Center Podcast feed live on YouTube. Here we are. You see our faces. Cameras are rolling. I'm Ken Knapsack. And I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. And I am very happy to be here on the internet in the Jedi archives in a Jedi robe, sometimes disappearing into the Jedi archives and becoming a Force spirit. Just my hand is a Force spirit. The rest of me is real, Ken. I, I think this makes you maybe Luke on crate and me Kylo. Is that what's going on? <laughs> I wish Kylo had a hat like yours. Uh, yeah, no, I got the beanie, and I got, of course, got my Brian Ward pod racing shirt. Shout out to the great <laughs> Brian Ward, who's got more shirts on sale. Get them before uh, they are pulled down. We got people checking on in here. Uh, Josh was here. Dave Taylor, as I brought that coming up, be very, very happy with your background, Joseph. Look at that. You already have a fan. Yeah, yeah, I see some Jocasta new shout outs. That is yeah, exactly that is great. Please. Uh, I want to be careful the way I phrase this, but I would love to be sassed by Jocasta new. <laughs> Big Lou is here. It's happening. A lot of people checking on in here. Uh, this is uh, this is fun. And also, Joseph, we should point out uh, an old an old podcast guest has returned. Yes. Whiskey is here. The spirit of whiskey. Mm. Mm. Uh, we've had a couple big returns. Of course, Jennifer Landa back with the show. Uh, always never left the show, was always part of it. But now back into the recording mix on our Monday recording session for our Tuesday news. And sure enough, you know, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if very soon uh, Jennifer's uh, uh, cameras fire up to join uh, one of these programs there. Uh, and uh, Joseph, it's nice to have uh, whiskey back right now. I'm drinking. It you is nice. off air. I'm drinking a, a Dean Martin here. Yes, you have a whiskey and then some sort of fancy apple juice, correct? I do. I have a Zevia Kids. <laughs> Zevia Kids. <laughs> Just, uh, I really like that you have like whiskey and something that would come in a lunchbox. That's it's a lovely mix. Perfect for the internet. Lovely mix indeed. We've got some pre-selected questions. Zig, we're going to take some of your live questions here. Uh, you can submit them. And yeah, the option of Super Chat is always there. We'll certainly mention it. It helps keep the show running, but not why we're here. We are here to just hang out with all of you, give these cameras uh, a run on Force Center. And we'll be joined around 4.30 by the wonderful Alex and Molly Damon of Star Wars Explained. Uh, they, they are longtime friends of the show, longtime mm -hmm. friends of us. But Joseph, I want to... The reason we decided to finally commit to a little bit more YouTube content was uh, Alex, Molly, and your words on their channel, yeah? Oh, yeah. No, it was very nice. Uh, we had a, a thought. Uh, I, I had a thought about the uh, the portrayal of the Tusken Raiders in that first episode of the Book of Boba Fett and how they kind of reflected some of the different things that Boba has been, wants to be, uh, the warrior, the child, the leader, and got a very nice text from Alex saying, that's great. Do you want to, like, maybe just... Uh, drop a little bit of that thought into a video and it's like sure i'll write something up and then it's like alex i'm sorry it's it's very long he's like eh, that's okay it can just be its own video so it was very very kind of alex we always love talking with them and i'm particularly ken excited to be doing this youtube thing because it's something that you and i have talked about for a long time of mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll have some like deep thoughts in in opinions about themes and all that yeah. uh but we also want to just have fun and uh, joke around a little bit, have a whiskey, kick back and kind of talk Star Wars in a jokey and fun fashion, as well as in a deep fashion, because I like yeah. that we do everything on Force Center from uh, the profound to the absurd. <laughs> and this will be a little on the absurd side, maybe. A little on the absurd. We got some yeah, great questions pre-selected from our Discord, which is uh, attached to our Patreon page, of course. But we're just going to, yeah, tee it up and, and have some fun indeed. And, and just bring it back to, so I am I'm keep making references to it because that gives me an excuse to lift it up and take a sip. Hmm. This is a great question. Before we get to some of our pre-selected ones, it's not even a question, it's a statement. Finky says, I never knew what you looked like until today. <laughs> I find that refreshing because you and I are both, you know, in other things and on other things. And I, I guess I just assumed that people might know our faces, but I'm actually, Pinky, glad that you don't know what we look like. That is, that is phrased so poetically. I almost feel like Pinky is saying they saw our souls today. Like, finally, I know what you really look like on the inside. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nathan Thomas likes seeing our faces as well. Well, we have uh, let's get to some questions, Joseph. If you're ready to get to some questions here. Yeah. 
<laughs> this first one comes from our friend Tim Van Newland. Uh, he is a Discord whiz, by the way. He uh, admins my Knapsack Files uh, Saturday Night Knapsack Discord. He is uh, he's a whiz at this. He says, uh, "What are you most looking forward to at Star Wars Celebration? Brand new announcements, new trailers, hunting for a specific action figure, <laughs> a certain food in Anaheim, or something else? The possibilities are endless." This is a great way to kick off the show. Joseph, uh, what are you excited for as Force Center and Joseph? Ooh, ooh, there's like the announcement side of it. So I was thinking about that a lot, about what kind of things could be announced. You know, I'd be happy to have some clarity on the next movie if that's uh, the right time to either announce or to, yeah. you know, get people hyped uh, with a panel. I think there's a good chance of uh, a an animated series being announced. That stuff's all great. I'm very excited for it. The truth in my heart, Ken, as you know, yeah. is uh, my happy place is being on the floor of Star Wars Celebration looking for action figures. And if it's like it was set up in the past with a beer, it, that's just yeah. like that's the kind of fantasy I had as a young man that I didn't I didn't think that would ever be a thing that I could do outside of my own apartment is walk around with a beer and look at action figures. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Set it, up, set it up in the living room and you go. This is a good point because, yeah, there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to as well. Notif uh, not notifications, announcements, clarifications, uh, Taika Waititi's film, is Rogue Squadron a thing? More shows. But if you and I weren't going to get into any panels, whether uh, as an attendee, press, whatever, I could live with that. Mm -hmm. The knowledge, you know, if I have to live with the knowledge that you and I couldn't hit the floor... <laughs> I'd be really heartbroken. There's no other thing I enjoy more at celebrations than walking around with a bunch of Star Wars fans. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm, I'm really in particular, uh, Tim asked about action figures. I've been thinking since celebration, there are a couple of action like characters I don't have any or many action figures of because they just slipped uh, through my collecting phases. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on, on the lookout for Dooku. It's going to be my little documentary maybe I'll film. Looking for Dooku. I'm going to pick out a Dooku. <laughs> the dooku that is right for me and the other thing about walking the floor ken is yeah. uh it's all all of celebration yeah. but it, it in in um in chicago in particular was this great experience of people coming up and saying hello and being nice but also asking questions or saying or, or sharing opinions and it was totally just what do you think there was nothing negative about it like right after the rise of skywalker trailer came out it was truly like oh man i'm I, i'm i'm excited about palpatine but how do you think he's gonna come back or I like this, but I'm concerned about this. And it just felt like because of the spirit, total conversation, not yeah. internet anger. Exactly. It, it, it might be that the shields are down. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> not, not that I'm going to, you know, come at you with a hard ride if you attack me. But, you know, I, I believe there's that face to face energy. And, and it's just it is it's celebration for a reason. And I, I, you're absolutely right. It's fun to have those conversations. It's fun to celebrate Star Wars while looking at all aspects of it. Like I've grown tired of the discourse over Grand Inquisitor's head already. But I bet I'd have fun talking about it with a beer walking around the floor. It's a pretty fun topic when you when you kind of remove the anger and just like, is that scary man's head high enough? It's a fun conversation. I've got Brian Ward's high, a comment highlight. He says, I'm so ready for the floor show. Yeah. As, as we have uh, mentioned, he's buying anything uh, Dex related. I see. I, I we, we've talked about this before, but I think since we're doing this for a show, uh, you, you and I got to we've we've got to meet Brian Ward before Schmodown related things, everything. But. That's Chicago celebration. We got to walk around the floor with Brian like kids in an actual candy shop. <laughs> that's that's a near and dear memory to my heart. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to make more. And I do see that Andrew McNabb has been asking about Dooku. Uh, if we are looking for uh, Chris Lee, Christopher Lee, Dooku, or elongated head animated Dooku, uh, I, I probably want one of both. And mm. if the actual action figure was labeled elongated head Dooku, that would be an instant purchase. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you're looking for Dooku, beer, maybe a convention hot dog or something <laughs> in your hands there. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. As far as figures, I, I because I've kind of run out of room, and I know you, you and I have talked often about uh, run out of room. By the way, side note: a friend of mine texted me today. Goes, I in November, uh, whenever the 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 Kickstarter, the crowdfund for the 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 Razor Crest happened, right? So a couple months. He goes, I, I did it out of course. Why wouldn't? And then he, it arrived this week, and it's actually stressing out my marriage. <laughs> and he sent me a picture, and the box is on an office chair in front of his office in his apartment with his wife, and on a note it just says, "This is your fault." And I, I think it, that's kind of the spirit of celebration, toys too. 
I need to make sure that I fully understand this. Is his wife in the picture? Uh, with no. okay, I thought she was in the picture to show both the scale of Razor Crest and the emotional impact of Razor Crest. It is big. It's life changing size. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I like uh, I, I I love the uh, I absolutely love the the, uh, the the stress it might cause on even your living situation to get it. Yeah, yeah. It, it has to. Uh, it forces you to uh, readjust your life and your space. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you looking for anything else, Ken? No. So the spirit of that, where I was going with that is is uh, toys. I just kind of, if it's something pops in, if it's some weird collectible, something small that I don't have to worry about too much, or something just strikes me. But I love looking because it's a world of possibilities. I saw Alden Diaz in, earlier saying hey, Joseph staring at a wall of three and three quarters is like the <laughs> panel wants to attend. I love that energy. You just don't know what you're going to stumble on, uh, you know, and there's been times I've looked at like the Kenner em em Emperor's Royal Guard until I saw the mm -hmm. price tag and then I put it back uh, and then I bought a loose uh, Han Solo classic Kenner for like 10 bucks at uh, <laughs> uh, like WonderCon in Vegas because I just wanted to have it. So we'll see that as far as food goes, as far as food goes, you all know I love chain restaurants, so. I am really looking forward to a, a royalty like meal, just a, a big like a court king, queens, uh, princes and princesses. Everyone at, at Bubba Gump, just gather Ooh. around for a big Bubba, Bubba Gump <laughs> shrimp. Dinner. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, I, I really want everyone to eat the most challenging food in a stressful, sweaty convention space. That <laughs> sounds wonderful. <laughs> So, Tim, great way to start us off there. Uh, if you just join us, we are Four Center Live here for the first time on our YouTube channel. We, there's videos on this channel with our faces, right, Joseph? We did a couple movie watch ones, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a there's pictures of us lounging on, on your, your lovely Ikea couch uh, yeah. watching Star Wars. Yeah. It's a good L-shaped Ikea couch. <laughs> uh, interview with Jamie Stan, Stan Groom, uh, yeah, there, uh, James Arnold Taylor. We have that interview a lot on here, but uh, it's hard. It's, it's it, I, We've always been pretty honest. People have asked to see our faces. It's, uh, it's an extra step of life that sometimes it's hard to commit to, right? It's like the Jedi way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why we kind of wanted to do something like this that's a little bit different in vibe, too, because, you know, it, if there were an action figure of Ken and he had a Comtech chip, yeah. one of your three main phrases would be, I'm a radio guy like <laughs> that's a part of who you are. And it's a part of our podcasts that it's a real intimate conversation, not not worrying about where your eyes are. So yeah. that's a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm trying to stare into my lens. Find your lens. Kid. <laughs> All right. Second question. We got a second question coming in here. Uh, we've got uh, for a lot of us old farts that I guess is us here. There were things in the prequels that we struggled with at the time, even if we overall still enjoyed the films. What is something you struggled with at first, but now put right up there with your favorite things in Star Wars? Douglas Dubois, as we often mess up by saying, is uh, the one <laughs> this question. Uh, Joseph, we are prequelists here. That is an old term around these parts. Uh, we love celebrating these movies. We love sharing our journeys. Where do you go with this question? What changed for you? Yeah, I think maybe one of the biggest things that I was like, oh, I'm not sure about this when I was a, a young man is I'm going to say the battle droids. Uh, when I was going into Phantom Menace, if we've, as we've talked about a lot, grew up with the original trilogy, then you're, I'm watching uh, the VHS <laughs> uh, of the original trilogy, and Empire Strikes Back is the best because it's gritty, it's dark, Luke is in pain, just like me when I broke up with a girl. Uh, a little bit uh, easier on me than Luke. <laughs> but uh, I, so I'm going into Phantom Menace with the, like, who, who are going to be the new stormtroopers? They're going to look really cool. And, like, I thought the battle droids looked cool, but, like, oh, the... The bad guys aren't supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be super scary. So I kind of resisted them in that way. And uh, even even though I, I felt that way, I still thought they were kind of funny when, you know, they're trying to stop Qui-Gon and uh, give us your idea and all that. But uh, watching them on, on the Clone Wars animated series has just made me a big fan of yeah. the actual hell of the battle droids. They were darker than I realized because I love this story now that they're mass produced. They aren't particularly <laughs> mean. Yeah. They uh, really don't know what they're involved in. Uh, they're not programmed well for this and they're deadly because there's too many of them. Uh, but yeah, it seems like if anybody could just talk to the battle droids and go, do you want to be doing this? They'd be like, no, no, <laughs> no. I just wanted a promotion. <laughs> um, that's a great answer. That's a great answer. I went to 
in my mind, it went to a couple scenes at first. Uh, you know, we we celebrate Dexter Jetster here. We love Dexter. The Dexter's Diner thing has been something I always kind of enjoyed, but it was cheeky. Now I think it's legitimately one of my favorite sequences in Star Wars, a place to go there. But I'll answer General Grievous himself. Mm. I, I spe- Even an early Force Center episode when we were still, you know, here, celebrate the prequels. And, and, and my journey was drastically changing and rapidly changing. I just always would say I was a little disappointed by Grievous, the hack and the cough, and I got a lot of the story. I get it. I get uh, Mace choked him in some of the story. I get it, but I just wanted more. Wanted a badass villain, and he ran away, and and he kept losing, and he wasn't as powerful. And, and the more I get explained it, the more I realized I was just <laughs> explaining the point. <laughs> yes, like that Twitter phenomenon of you're almost there. You, almost you're there. almost understanding in your criticism of why why people like this and again without a doubt you got to the, give the clone wars animated series the second one and the first one i guess you could say the tartakasu ones just giving a bigger picture a more complete picture of grievous but also what grievous meant and and the lesson for anakin in front of him all those things we've talked about here on the channel before now i i chew up grievous content i want grievous figures i, I lack a lot of grievous figures maybe that's what i'll look for at Anaheim celebration, just one of one of those big grievous figures with the the lightsabers all out. Oh yeah, I, I want to pick up the uh, the very special limited edition one uh, that is the moment of his death, where his uh, organ sac is ruptured and the flames are shooting out of his eyes. <laughs> you know, for kids. How high in uh, in your memory um, banks and and when you rank your Star Wars fan memories, how high is it going to be when you discovered finally at that last celebration the the uh, like was it the the Obi Wan with the baby Luke? That yeah, the, uh, that was. Yeah. A- yeah, the separation of the twins. I, I had been vaguely aware of it, but I forgot it existed. And then it that was the one I was hunting because like, OK, I saw it one day and then it was gone from that place. It was like, I need it. It's a great Kenobi figure, one of my favorite uh, molds, uh, sculpts from Revenge of the Sith. And then I just love that it's an uh, infant of Luke Skywalker uh, and Obi-Wan Kenobi's hands aren't molded to actually cradle the baby he's not like supporting luke's head he's just kind of sticking his hands out and the baby's just laying on top of him uh and i think i need to get the bail and leia one too uh that uh, that is uh yeah that's right i was gonna ask yeah there is that one we yeah th- that that's got to be the the 2022 uh looking for dooku joseph searches for a dooku action figure and then completing the the, the tableau <laughs> of uh bail with the leia i will bring the babies home that's right uh, Dylan, check it on in here. I can't stay watch, but you guys are the best. We appreciate that. We appreciate you guys uh, being open to this and, and just hanging out with cheers, us here. Cheers, Dylan. Yeah, uh, we absolutely uh, love it. Yeah, cheers indeed. I love it. Yeah, it, Force Ghost uh, whiskey is what you're drinking there when uh, you take a sip, Joe. <laughs> this is a, a live question um, coming on in here, and we'll get to some uh, pre-selected ones here. And again, for those uh, wondering, our, our guests, Alex and Molly Damon, Star Wars Explained, but joining us about 4.30 our time, 7.30 their time. Uh, I love this question here. It's uh, well, it's more of a demand uh, from our wonderful listener Andrew uh, McCabe, a true Force Center friend. Says, "Mebra Gascon, discuss Joseph. This is a big week upcoming for Force Center. We are getting to the Mebra Gascon arc in the Clone Wars report." Yeah, we are to the Droid Squad arc. Uh, I don't think I've watched it since my first watch through of the Clone Wars. I'm so so excited uh, to rewatch it. I've watched bits and pieces of it, um, and I think I'm going to be very open to Mebra Gascon because. It's just I've I've my my relationship with the silly side of Star Wars has just blossomed uh, because I can really enjoy it if I enjoy it. And also, if I if it's not a silly moment, that's particularly for me. I'm just also so OK that that is a part of Star Wars. And even if it doesn't land for me, it's going to land for somebody else. And if we lose the silly of yeah. Star Wars, then we risk going down into this road that's too grim too cool too badass all the time and i love those elements of star wars but you know look you need a little vader hallway a little meber gascon (laughs) maybe a little more vader hallway than meber gascon hopefully but uh i love that i love that Uh, ethan 15 says d scott d squad is great r2 is a great leader while meber and uh wa c47 bumble through trying to lead (laughs) r2 r2 is always kind of in the background there yeah the the oscar film forecast says meber is an icon and a legend for me, I, I got to tell you, this week's going to be really interesting. I have been afraid, been afraid <laughs> to go back as Doomslayer420 uh, says, excuse me, it's Colonel Mieber Gascon. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Colonel, my apologies, Colonel. Uh, I've been afraid to go back 
because it was something for so long I've been just certain that I disliked in Star Wars that when I'm I just might have to face myself, Joseph. And if if I do end up really loving Mieber this time around, Colonel Gascon, I'm gonna have to face some things about myself, and that's sometimes hard to do. Yeah, I think uh, Mieber is a mirror in which we must face ourselves. I'm seeing some great comments about Mieber. The other thing about some of the Clone Wars humor is, uh, just like uh, Star Wars pulls from all different genres of 20th century entertainment, there's a real interest in pulling from like early film comedy, and it sounds yeah. like Mieber maybe is going to fit those archetypes pretty well. I love that. Going back to our overall prequel question here, Big Lou's work workshop with a great super chat. Thank you, Big Lou, for supporting the channel and the show here. I struggle with the fact that I was supposed to hate them in the prequels. <laughs> and I just didn't agree with pop culture. I love them from the beginning, and I'm 45. So Lou's right there with us. It reminds me of some of the comments of my friend, uh, a friend of the show, Adam Witt from the movie guys. We had him on here, and he's just talking about, you know, I was there kind of from the beginning too. Uh, and Joseph, I was, you had your, you have your issues. You've documented your issues, but I think you were there way before me. And from a distance, I would look at fans like you again, you, you can like what you not, what you, what you like. You can not like what you don't like in star Wars. That's totally fine. I just, I was always kind of like, what am I, why can't I, why can't I get it? I want to get it. I want to get it. So big Lula hats off to you. Yeah, yeah, I really agree with Big Lou. I think for me, I had all the sort of criticisms and I made the jokes, but I still loved the movies and I was still excited for them and buying all the toys. And I always remember a conversation with a, a good friend of mine where he's like, what, why? I, I thought you had these criticisms. Why are you still, why do you have this many lightsabers? What, What is going on? And I was like, it's Star Wars. It has lightsabers. I just like it. And I think that's the thing is as soon as you give yourself permission to let the walls down, then you can see things that you didn't see before. Yeah. yeah. Alda Diaz uh, cut me to the quicker. Ken enters the Dagobah cave and he just sees Mieber there. And uh, seeing your film uh, with a, uh, a great super chat there as well. We really appreciate that. Not needed to communicate with us today, but always appreciate to help keep the channel and show running here without a doubt. Go, going uh, back to even some of that stuff with like, like Mieber and, and, and um, uh, the prequels. Yeah. It's, um, it's just it's it's important to be able we always talk about entry points, but also just some things it might not specifically be designed for you, whether it's an age or a perspective or experiences and it's someone else. But it's part of this big picture. And I just love kind of now being in a position where I can kind of sit back and, and appreciate it for that, where I know someone else might be getting something more out of it than me. And that almost inspires me to love it even more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Brian Ward's putting in the uh, comments here, hashtag butt cows. Butt cows is what I always called the, the shacks. Or rather, my friends, would, would <laughs> when they would run out of the most common criticisms of Attack of the Clones, they'd be like, and what's with those butt cows? And like, they're called shacks. Thank you very much. Was a, uh, a little party trick. That, this guy knows the name of the butt cows. That was very fun. And uh, you, you bring up, you, you were talking about jokes and butt cows and everything. I still love making little jokes out of love to Star Wars. And I, I always admit sometimes the last couple of years because of this discourse, social media, whatever you want to throw out there, I, I just felt like I, I lost my own ability to have a little fun with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. so that's something I, I've been trying to reconnect with a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Got some more questions on the way in the pre-selected category here. Uh, but uh, Hulk Black Widow says, let's talk Kenobi. Uh, we just, uh, we will, we'll get there. But we did, we want to highlight, we did put out a, a two-hour breakdown of the uh, trailer, the teaser trailer. And I always say breakdown. It's it's not a breakdown. It's a discussion of everything going on in there. But to remix a little I was bit close to an emotional breakdown. Uh, an just emotional from, breakdown. From being happy. After a couple days, and we and by the way, on, on Tuesday's news show, uh, Jennifer Land is going to be there, and we're going to get all of her in, inside and, and takes and her reaction to it. A couple days after, Joseph, I want to check in with you, the, the bigger of the Kenobi fans around these parts here, though I love Kenobi as well. I want to check in with you. How you how you doing with Kenobi a couple days later? Oh, I'm still just so happy about it. I was always just happy to be seeing Ewan McGregor back in the role. The yeah. trailer coming out, I think the, the two things that are resonating the most with me is uh, the idea of what his story is, that it is in incredibly dark and bleak times. He is not going to win in any grand way. But this story that's about even if all he is fighting for is for his own sense of hope, for his own soul to prove I can't be broken, yeah. I will find the light. That's such an inspiring story for me. Plus, we get lots of lightsaber fighting. And then uh, the other short thing is just the real world impact of seeing this. This is just like the uh, the victory lap for prequels, right? Um, yeah. For people who grew up with the prequels, for Ewan realizing 
wow, after all these years, Ewan and Hayden, after yeah. all those years of the ups and downs that there are so many people who are there for it, that Duel of the Fates is a banger that brings everybody to the table uh, to yeah. mix my metaphors. That's so exciting to me in, in just kind of real world factor. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love I love hearing that. I, I, I you know, look, it's a, a minute, 46 seconds, still a long journey to go with the show. We'll see if all six episodes hit and and, you know, I'm excited for that. But yeah, I, I uh, a couple of days later, I rewatched it a couple of times this morning just because right. Just because. And this is why, you know, I get that. I wish the Inquisitor's head was uh, yeah, a little taller. Well, I get it. But I also I think Tion Madone, you could have pushed over with a, a gust of 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 light breezes <laughs> um so this is more practical but outside of that i love his speech in the sense of not that he's the big bad i think uh, reva uh, reva might be more the big bad in this six episode arc and that guy darth vader um i just love what he was saying the the compassion uh how it, it leaves a trail it's a stain it, they can't the jedi can't let that part of themselves go ever and you'll find mm. it you'll find them by looking for that compassion that's something that is just huge to now uh, i love these 19 years between three and four you, you all know that when you listen to me talk about star wars long enough and that was it's not a new aspect to it but it was a real vibrant uh you, you know uh, topic sentence for what's about to happen here a jedi yeah. want to be a jedi yeah you know the other thing i was thinking of i know this will come up uh more it, it's a great star wars conversation that you can either take you know seriously if it matters to you or it can be kind of funny the whole thing about obi-wan's age uh, I was remembering I did a show a while back uh, with Dave Foley and mm -hmm. Dave Foley had the great line of the truth of his own personal experiences. Well, until I was 40 years old, I looked like I was 12. And the second I turned 40, I looked like I was 72 years old. <laughs> Paraphrasing yeah. a great Dave Foley line, but it, it just keeps coming to mind of like, you know, what? sometimes it happens. Sometimes you wake up just one day like, wow, the uh, the age, uh, the wine has turned. The wine yeah. has turned today, <laughs> but not the whiskey. Yeah, no, there was a, a, you know, I don't engage too much on Twitter anymore these days, but I almost had an um actually moment to a complete stranger because they were kind of complaining about the lack. And it was actually a nice, good spirit of complaint. It was someone I, I love the show, love the trailer, but it was like the lack of gray in Kenobi and I, and, and how, uh, you know, that's got to match a little bit better. And I was just I wanted to write back. Stand by. Like how old? Are you? <laughs> stand by to stand by. <laughs> like I try to fight against old Palpatine hands. You know when you get old, your hands get a little. Uh, I, and I, I no, saw yeah, and you you can't help but hold them out in front of you all the time like this. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw myself on camera the other day. I was like, "What is going on with my damn hands? I got grandma hands already." And it happened like in a week. <laughs> I've been fighting it, so it happens there. Katie's here. Katie Barker says the trailer was amazing, better than I expected. Yeah, Aww. you know what. I that's a good thing. I was expecting greatness, but I was nervous, Joseph. I was nervous because uh, I have a lot of personal just uh, pressure I'm putting on the show, if, I, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and I think for me, just seeing like that, it, the way they presented what's at stake in the trailer made me feel like, oh, man, if there are some beats that I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I'm not sure if, about that beat or I, if I got the opportunity to write that, maybe I'd make this slightly different choice. Like there might be some beats like that, but yeah. that trailer convinced me that the heart of it is there. The stakes of it are there and just like the Star Wars adventure serial lightsabers and yeah. spaceships and, you know, water moons of torture, like all that fun is there, too. So it made me feel really good. Water moons of torture. <laughs> oh, that's a great band. They, I saw them open up for, for uh, uh, de um, uh, dead Kennedys. All right. I'm just pulling. The <laughs> I'm looking at the chat here. Um uh, we uh, our guests are almost here. Uh, they're here. They're ready to be pulled in. But I want to get one more pre-selected mm. question in here, and this is a big one coming from a longtime Force Center listener, uh, whose name we used to just struggle with, and I still struggle with. But Mark Canope is here. Uh, check it in. It says Eclipse takes place in the High Republic, but it remains to be seen if the game will ever get out of the development phase, and probably for the best, considering who's making it. And we at Force Center here, uh, you know, we we really uh, understand, respect, and support the Blackout Star Wars. Experience clips uh hashtag and hopefully uh some things can improve over there that's a light understatement for me ken uh mark goes on but what kind of game would you like to see taking place in the high republic do you want to play as characters we already know or new characters love this question we love mark's support and have for over the years joseph i i really wanted to particularly pick your brains some more on mm. jedi video game high republic era what are you looking for 
Yeah, as as much as I want to play uh, some of my favorites from the High Republic, I want to have a tortured Elzar man, uh, you know, <laughs> adventure and like uh, hit the X button to, you know, think of Avar and cry. Um, definitely would love to do that. Uh, love uh, Bell Zedifar, love Wreath Silas. But I think because the High Republic is so open and that's so what, what's so much fun about it, I'd almost want to be like a Jedi that you that we haven't met in the books or the comics going through some of the adventures right of being mm -hmm. you know that's what they did so well to open it up of like you can be a jedi dealing with hyperspace you can be a jedi on valo that we haven't heard of yet and you could play through some of the adventures you could have a mission uh where bell uh lets ember tag along with you <laughs> so you can get some quality time with ember uh but i think i would enjoy being a brand new jedi that i could kind of invest myself in yeah, I, I'm with you. First of all, D David McKay, aka Channel 19, has the real answer. Geode fl flight sim. <laughs> uh, yeah, at Horizon Brave Max, I would uh, want to need more Geode. Geode, uh, one of my favorites as well. I'm with you. You've heard me talk about this before, Joseph, uh, as being a sports fan, and I love sports game. I want my pod, ras pod racing career mode franchise game. Give me that with the High Republic era, where I can start out as a kid Jedi, a youngling, I'm found. Uh, you can build your own Jedi, and then it's a career mode, man. Like I go through the training, <laughs> buy robes, get build your lightsaber, go on the gathering uh, with Huang showing up there. Give me the whole thing, and along the way, maybe there's some choices. Maybe some choices come in. Maybe the Nile starts showing up, and you're like, I don't know. Maybe they got a point. Or Vanessa Rose, like we should probably take more, uh, you know, pre preemptive action. You're like, yeah, kind of get that. Or Elzar Man's like, let's go get a drink, and maybe, yeah, I don't know. You can see if you meet someone. <laughs> choices you know Bill death sticks are around so that would be a choice yes yes absolutely absolutely uh wonderful question mark thank you uh yeah uh we are uh excited for uh any high republic content uh at this uh point here uh we got some questions coming in but i joseph think it's time to bring in our longtime friends colleagues compatriots and occasional rivals in trivia contests. <laughs> uh, a lot of you know them. Uh, they have been uh, making Star Wars content here on YouTube for a very long time, since it was, I think, called like Star Wars Minute when I first started uh, catching up with Star Wars canon because of their work. <laughs> They're two of our favorite people. They, if you, if you ever watch them and think, they seem like nice cats, it's because they are. They're the best. Please welcome Alex and Molly Damon. These are the fine Yay. folks. <laughs> 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 Hello. <laughs> Hello. There was excellent uh, peak. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. In the lower third step. Uh, I just want people, you know, make sure they know who you are. You know, uh, <laughs> all, all prime war design us some lower profile, lower thirds for when guests show up here. Can you can you uh, adjust that so it's right over our faces, Ken? So it's just like we've been censored. <laughs> yeah, I'll flip it around. Uh, love this. Uh, love. Uh, thank you so much, uh, and thank you again uh, for the support. You two have given us over the years, uh, you know, you were so established on the YouTube side. We've never really have been. Uh, and, and we really appreciate your support. So it would just felt right to have you two here for this show. Well, you, you're both like the Star Wars fans that I aspire to be. So Aww. anytime that's when when I hear things that you say on the podcast, I'm like that more people need to hear this. Are you? <laughs> oh, oh, OK. I thought you meant old and grumpy. You'll get there. Trust me. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> uh, how you both doing? How how is uh, how's how's Kenobi week going for you two? Good, and I was excited. You both said you were drinking some whiskey, so I was like, "Well, I guess I better run downstairs. I don't want to be." I have my Grogu out. cup. <laughs> oh, nice! Oh. It, is Grogu full of whiskey? Uh, this Grogu is full of tequila. Okay, uh, <laughs> but so. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good T-shirt. We got to. Uh, I want to get it quickly before I lose it because super chats can fade away. Uh, again, generous. We're not uh, asking for super chats to show up. We absolutely appreciate it. We're taking questions from everyone here today, to be clear. But Bill Rudd has a eleven thirty eight super chat, which uh, we <laughs> really appreciate. That it says hello there, says Bill. It's a great time to be a Star Wars fan, indeed. But the re re but the reoccurring Force Center quote, I feel that uh, the need to shout out is, "I'm with you too." It flows with your agreeable an analysis as well. All right, so not, I, I missed. I, I didn't see a lack of a question mark. It's a great statement there. Yeah. But I want to spin this, Joseph, uh, to Alex and Molly, if you go with me here. You two uh, working on the YouTube side, which can be, you know, podcasts can be kind of protected. If we don't want to engage, we want to pull back, 
We just do our shows. We put them out there. You guys are out there uh, at the, on, sometimes on 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 just, uh, you know, the, the, the front lines of what's going on. Uh, how do you both find your, your positive heart, which is not uh, a blind positivity to Star Wars or the franchise or even the companies behind it, but but discussing it, breaking it down? How do you all uh, manage that these days? Uh, yeah, if well, I look I at it's. I was, I was gonna say, say if I look at the comments, Molly grabs my phone and throws it away. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. I I keep the inter- I try to keep the internet away from him as much as possible. I've got a pretty tough skin. I I find it very easy to stay positive, uh, mm. but I do still limit my time on places like Twitter and the yeah the comment section. I go a couple qu- comments down and then I stop. I don't go beyond that because then you get into the dark side down there. <laughs> it's literally in the lower levels of the comment section <laughs> yeah. that you find the danger in the darkness. When <laughs> when something does slip through to either of you that that really does get under your skin, uh, how do you cope with that? Do you have any uh, particular techniques, uh, either from like real life, or do you have any sort of Star Wars moments or lessons that you go to when you realize like the anger is boiling and it's getting close to coming out? I like to talk to my more casual friends like the people who aren't in the online star wars space my friends who are like there's a new star wars movie out or or show or whatever and they watch it and they talk with me about it and like that's the extent of their engagement uh i'll just tell them what's going on and they're like what are you even talking about (laughs) and then i remember that like we're we're in a a subsection of a subsection of a subsection of a fandom and uh, i should probably pull myself back out of that yeah how about you molly yeah, I, I do the same thing pretty much, especially like my girlfriends. They they don't know what's going on in the Star Wars world. You know, they, they know that new shows are coming out, but I'll tell them about, you know, oh, here's the fresh drama on Star Wars Twitter today. And they're like, literally, what is any of that? What is a Grand Inquisitor? I don't know what that is. Right. right. And, and it's, right. it can't yeah. possibly be grand if the head is not this right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just really refreshing to take a few steps just out of Star Wars world and yeah, just get to know what your friends are doing and what they're up to and what they think about Star Wars because it's probably a lot different than what you're reading online. For, yeah, for a quote that... like you asked for, uh, your focus determines your reality. Mm. And so that's, I, I like run that through my head where if I'm just on Twitter or YouTube too much, then I'm like, that you're focusing on. Uh, fake life <laughs> and just like l- focus on something real yeah, yeah. No, i think that's really great yeah, i think it is to me uh, i love what you're both saying because i think it is sometimes about the in- intensity not the actual opinion like we're making jokes about grand inquisitor but if somebody feels like oh man I-, I don't like that look like that's great it's just when it gets intense um my wife was uh out of town uh the day the very controversial uh brightly colored scooter episode of uh book of boba <laughs> fett released so I had this really fun, like, I got to reset because she came home like a week after it had all happened. And we watched the episode and we talked about like kind of big ideas and that. And I was like, OK, so something in this made people really, really upset. Can you guess what? And she's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, she made some great wild guesses and we got down to the scooters. And and it wasn't that. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, it wasn't that uh, idea of oh, maybe people doesn't like that. It was the idea that people could be furious about that that Mm -hmm. was the weird thing right i think that's it it's yeah it is refreshing uh and look it's not that and and not that there aren't important things discussed on star wars twitter or things and big issues we need to discuss that's always uh, something i agree with but yeah it is refreshing to talk to those friends who are just like wait a minute wait a minute people uh people didn't like solo which which does not mean that you have to like solo just means like oh i i i watched it on a tuesday at home and i loved it and Mm -hmm. and I, i think it's good to just reconnect with that energy sometimes yeah. And I've had a couple conversations uh, lately, too, in, in, in person where somebody's like, oh, yeah, no, I really I really hated that. I'm like, OK, cool. I liked it. Like, anyway, what should we get for lunch? And there's yeah. that reminder of like, it could just be that it could just be that I liked it. You didn't. Great. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a thread of like, here's why I liked it and here's why you shouldn't like it. And yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite, like just out in the world stories is it was I think what I think it was actually when I was flying out to do our triple threat showdown mm. that the timeline seems about right. Uh, yeah. And we were at the airport and I was handing my bag to uh, the person who was going to check it. And he saw that I was wearing a Star Wars shirt. He was like, oh, Star Wars fan. I was like, yeah. And he's holding 
like my life for the next three days in his hands. And he's like, what'd you think of the last Jedi? <laughs> and I was just like, he, he probably didn't mean it as anything. He was probably just curious. Uh, yeah. But like having been involved in so many debates online, I was like, oh, what do I say? <laughs> <laughs> that yep. is very funny when it's like actually yeah i kind of had an experience like that when i bought the soundtrack for rise of skywalker like a, a, an actual disc at a store and the person was nice they're just trying to start conversation like oh did you like rise of skywalker or did you like last jedi and i was like well i i kind of i liked them both <laughs> he's just like yeah impossible i did wow oh, cool i didn't i didn't know you could do that all right I voted for the bull moose party. I went, I went <laughs> third option. Yeah, I love, I, I wear those little, uh, the Han and Leia little, uh, uh, enamel pins from our, our friends over at Black Series Rebels stole my jacket. And that, that is, uh, you know, gets a lot of attention uh, as it should, but it's like, there's that moment of like, oh, Star Wars Han. You're like, here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, did you like the new ones? Like, ah, oh, yeah, I did. Oh, I did too. Or, uh, and then you kind of deal from there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we got a question coming in here from Madison. Madison Badger says, so what chance might C-3PO, 3PO and R2, the greatest movie character of all time, mm. ooh, appear with Bail Organa in Obi-Wan? Thank you for the super chat, Madison. We really appreciate that. Molly, let's start with you here. Vegas odds, the droids that we love showing up in this series. I honestly hadn't thought about that until just now, but I had they, ha they have been in a lot uh almost everything so i wouldn't be surprised especially r2 you know he, you just put him in and he beeps uh 3po <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 3po Probably you not. gotta get anthony daniels in and i'm sure anthony daniels is excited to come back to star wars in any form or fashion that he possibly can so i it, I don't know. It, the tone for Obi-Wan doesn't strike me as like, oh, yeah, they're going to have some droids in there, uh, specifically these two droids. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, the tone fits with them, but. Uh, you, you, I love that you sound like a crusty old film director and R2 is your star. Like, I don't care. Just point the camera at him and he'll beep. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Love That's it. Great. Joseph, I'm going to slide over to you here with this one here. Uh, R2, R2 and Kenobi meeting, but Kenobi being like, sorry. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I would, wouldn't be shocked, but I, I would, if I had to put money down, I'd say, eh, probably not. I think certainly not a Kenobi interaction, maybe a, a fun, uh, you were seeing bail and, and R2 is right there. 3PO, you know, brings him a report, but kind of thing. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked by that, but it does feel like there's already so much going on in Kenobi. Um, I, I, I'd be I'd be almost more interested in them popping up in Andor because I love it whenever 3PO is around horrible darkness <laughs> and either makes <laughs> brings in some wacky, inappropriate comedy or like the great moment in Revenge of the Sith where it's just like, oh, I for once I am I'm understanding the tone. OK, this ah. is I'm just so sorry. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's great stuff there. Alex, these droids that you haven't thought of apparently till now. How dare you, R2 is the greatest of all time. Oh, yeah. I think? mean, I, I was fully on board and expecting, yeah, Bail Organa is probably going to be in this. But yeah, if he's in it, then sure, R2 and C-3PO probably are just around the corner. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm like, 60% oh, chance? I, I, I think That's they probably have a fairly good chance. Yeah. The danger, I would think, is if it if it becomes too jokey if you can't, uh, of a cameo, like Joseph mentioned, and I'm joking about the Kenobi moment. I don't know if I'd want that, but yeah, it's it's like, is there is there a use for them? Is it just a nostalgia pop? I I don't mind the Rogue One appearance, but it is what it is, right? You you you'd expect to see him, but you, you don't need to spend much time with him. But uh, as long as it doesn't get in the way, I'm never going to turn down R two or three PO. I think I agree with Joseph. I'd rather see them in Andor, which again I hadn't considered, but. Again, Bale is probably going to be in that with Mon Mothma and send 3PO on a mission with Andor. That sounds like a blast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let, let's get Ramus Antilles some quality time, right? Because they can be around Bale, but they're like they're right there with with old Ramus, right? Yeah. And Cassian is because he's so focused on the things he needs to be focused about. You know, we talked about it on a recent Force Center episode, Joseph. Like, I sometimes would just want to see Cassian not smile like, hey, smile, but like, hey, get a moment of joy. I don't think he'd suffer 3PO lightly. Doesn't seem like he'd go get along with 3PO, and it would, <laughs> which would be funny. Maybe he tries to reprogram 3PO, and Cassian's <laughs> just got a, a problem with reprogramming droids. 
<laughs> that would make his his team up with K2SO kind of even funnier <laughs> down the down the line. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, K2 and 3PO together would be a lot of fun too. Ooh. I, Anthony Daniels and Alan Tudyk together would be kind of yeah. interesting. <laughs> Netflix Roadshow series. Uh, <laughs> Nick Field, hey, Nick, has a question coming in. So speaking of prequel actors return for the Kenobi series, do we think we'll see Natalie Portman in a vision, dream, or a flashback? Uh, the great question. We'll try to, try to answer that directly, but also just want to get your, your thoughts here. Alex Molly and Joseph and I will weigh in of just Natalie Portman, Padme, the character, but Natalie Portman, the performer, and her relationship to Star Wars. We're celebrating Hayden. I would love to see if she wanted to be involved in any way. I'd love to see her involved in some way. My ultimate uh, redemption hope is that Jake Lloyd could get to a point in his life where he'd want to come back, and I think we'd embrace him. That's a longer road, I think. But we saw Ahmed two years ago at Star Wars Celebration get a big hero's welcome. Uh, I think she's been, you know, she, she even the Saturday Night Live videos, those that she's talked about the legacy of Padme. I just would love to see her involved in some way around the Star Wars part. So uh, that's my monologue. I'm kicking to you, Mom. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought about this the other day. If we do end up getting flashbacks of Anakin and Kenobi during the Clone Wars, it would be awesome to see Anakin have like a nice quiet moment with Padme. I don't know, like you said, I don't know that she would want to come back to reprise the role. But even if we just saw her kind of in the background, another actress, maybe similar hair, similar, similar look. Uh, a little bit out of focus maybe and like Anakin walks over towards her I think that would be a really powerful scene I like that idea I like yeah. a lot about that yeah especially we might be spending some time with what's going on inside Vader I don't know Alex yeah I'm fully expecting there to be flashbacks in the series and I want them uh, but I'm also wary of them doing too much and mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense to have a flashback to a battle or a quiet moment between Obi-Wan and Anakin. I think that's going to be the major relationship, the the big emotional drama uh, that we're dealing with in this series. So I, as I would love to see Natalie Portman return to play Padme somehow. I'm mm. not sure if I want it to be in this. I don't uh, want them to be like, here's, a, I don't want this to be the book of Boba Fett <laughs> with a yeah. flashback every episode. That's fair. I think that's totally fair. And, and I kind of uh, I'm with you on some of that, even though I'm really intrigued about the character coming back and looking forward to Queen's Hope like nobody's mm -hmm. business. Uh, Joseph, what do you have there? Yeah, I think for sure flashback, at least of existing footage. I think it's too huge of a moment that her last words to Obi-Wan being there's still good in him. I think mm -hmm. that's a thing that Obi-Wan is going to have to face. Uh, I'm they may or may not address it, but I'm really still hoping for uh, support of the Obi-Wan once thought as you did. I, I really want for Kenobi yeah. to make an effort to get to Anakin and have an interaction that is kind of justice for Kenobi, where we see why Kenobi truly believes he is gone. I can't get through to him. I think if Padme was alive, she couldn't get through to him. I, you know, I want to see Kenobi's conviction of Anakin is truly gone. Why he believes that. And I think uh, Padme plays into that massively. I think definitely hopeful for a Anakin and Obi-Wan uh, flashback together. I think there's room for Padme there. I think there's room for uh, Vader having a kind of what if sort of flash like he's had in comics and books of uh, himself and Padme at the age uh, or Natalie Portman at the age they actually are in real life of a what if flashback, you know, no armor, red saber. I got my wife by my side. And I have all this power. Uh, final thing for me, I think Natalie Portman is the, kind, is the kind of actor who comes back based on what she thinks of the script. Yeah. She she tapped out of Thor and she's back. Right. <laughs> and I think yeah. if she believed in the part, she'd she'd be back. She's she was like, oh, Endgame, I get though. a hammer now. Yes, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, she, she did come back for Endgame, but that might have been like part of her Thor four contract. Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. I I do think that there's a way, and Joseph, you kind of mentioned it with visions. I would love if they went this weird. I'm not really expecting it, but if they showed Kenobi going through some sort of trial the way that Yoda did uh, in the Clone Wars to become a Force ghost, if that played into this series, and then we could just, I don't know, have some trippy vision where Obi-Wan sees Satine and Ahsoka and uh, Padme and like all of these people from his past. I think that would be a fun way to get a bunch of cameos in. Uh, while also keeping it relevant to the story. 
Yeah, and that's the thing is like with the whole cameo discussion, for me, it's always does it feel like that's what this character would see or that's who would show up? And if if Obi-Wan is in trauma and thinking through his life, if it's a person who makes sense to show up to me, it doesn't feel like here, Star Wars fans, it feels like it's necessary for the story. Love that. Love that. Um, and yet again, Padme's a very important character to Star Wars, very much loved here and celebrated for, at Force Center. And we're looking forward to Queen's Hope. And yeah, that line, like you said, Joseph, we always talk about that. There's still good in him and how that tracks all the way to uh, to Luke and Return of the Jedi. So we'd love to we'd love to uh, have uh, Padme get some due some way, somehow in some show. Uh, and this could be it. We'll see. Uh, Bill Rudd has a question coming in here uh, in uh, the spirit of all things Kenobi. Here's a question that's bugging me. Why didn't he think the Camonians had a motive to assassinate Padme? She was against the Republic Army and they had just built one. So, Joseph, he arrives in Camino. He kind of learns what's going on. Why didn't at one point he think, oh, maybe they could have done it? He just. Went yeah, I think. I think for him, it, it, it's maybe this is a little bit of headcanon, but maybe it's a little bit of uh, of detective work as well as a force in uh, intuition. Right. There's nothing about the Kemi Noans that are acting like there's a problem. He's the one who's confused and has a problem. They're the ones like you ordered the army. It's almost ready to go. Um, it kind of you kind of get the vibe that the check is cleared. Right. <laughs> so check. I think they're not broadcasting any tension or problem. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. Actually, absolutely, Lama Sue, Itan, wait, yeah, no, no one's, no one's coming off too aggressive in those conversations. Yeah, I think this is a Columbo moment where, where Kenobi's just like, eh, I'm not getting a vibe from them. He does the turn around and another thing. Yeah, and another <laughs> thing. Whoop! I sat on my lightsaber. Yeah. Kids, kids, that was a Peter Falk as Columbo reference. I apologize. <laughs> I won't make one again. Uh, Alex, what do you think of this detective story here? And this question from Bill. Yeah, I think I agree with Joseph. Uh, I mean, that whole plot to me, I think we've even talked about it on another one of your podcasts, <laughs> the, the whole thing with Sifo Dias and the clone army and then the assassination attempt. And it's a Sith Lord hiring a bounty hunter who hires another bounty hunter who hires a droid to send worms into the room. Like, it's so convoluted that I, I think that even at the age of 15, when I saw Attack of the Clones, I like I didn't even think to have those questions. So... <laughs> I think I was I was just confused at that point, and I was like, "Obi Wan knows what he's doing," and I I, I trust him. <laughs> it's Star Wars poetry with Luke's plan to rescue Han. There are layers yeah. within layers. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea that Obi Wan himself is just so confused when he gets there about yeah, like who ordered this army? Oh, that's it's, why it's, I'm here. <laughs> it's for me. Yeah, that he's like, uh, I I don't smell anything funny going on here but there's a lot of, i have a lot of questions <laughs> yeah and i think it's he's reporting specifically about i don't know what the cami no that the cami no one's motivation is you know and yeah. and i think yoda and mace call out call him out on it right like no 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 don't make assumptions don't make assumptions don't make assumptions great question bill we got about 15 minutes left in the show so we'll get to some of these here uh Kenosis has this question. Big, big questions. Big questions. Can you try and get into the mind of Kenobi on Tatooine? Nothing to do on the desert. What would he be thinking about? Feeling, regretting? Why does he stay and not go live his life? <laughs> oh, that, that, that's uh, that's a big one right there, Kenosis. Uh, if Kenobi just goes, eh, not for this mission. I'm getting a drink. I'm heading on out of here. Uh, Molly, what, what could he possibly re be regretting on Tatooine? I mean, we saw in that article that he, you know, he, it sounds like he's going to be a very broken man at this point. And I think we had talked about this on a Q and a of ours at one point, someone asked if Satine was going to be in this. It, it would be interesting if we saw just some flashbacks from him and his memories and just the idea of him thinking like, Oh, what could have been with Satine or any other part of his life? What, what could have been, but he's just so broken uh, that you know, he, he's just shut himself off from the world. And yeah, he, he, he could be thinking of a lot of things of what he would have been able to do, but at this point can't. I yeah, absolutely. And for me, one of those things is one last meal at Dexter's diner. <laughs> come, on. come on, come on, Alex, what do you got? Uh, I recently read the Kenobi legends novel, uh, just to, prep myself and there mm. was a really good line I, i'm not going to remember it verbatim but just him talking about vaguely to someone else who doesn't know the full story but just that 
he feels immense guilt for his failure with someone and that that failure led to so much pain for so many people across the galaxy and i don't think that i had fully understood that like oh god yeah he he feels responsible for like everything everything below palpatine <laughs> like that yeah. that's that's a lot so seeing that image of him uh sitting in that cave just like yeah to me that screamed like well this is what i deserve is nothing <laughs> a pillow and a blanket on a rock and I'm just going to sit here with my binoculars. I'm going to watch that kid and make sure he's safe. So I would really love it if this story is about him confronting that failure and mm. forgiving himself a little bit and being like, you know what? I, I'm not going to go just live my life, but I deserve more. Like I, I didn't ruin everything. It wasn't all me. Anakin made his choices too. So I'm going to get myself a home and actually a little bit of comfort. I deserve more than what I'm giving myself. I hope he I at least has hunt. like a, yeah. yeah, at least maybe he has a Sudoku book under there somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, 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 go, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go for it, Ken. I was, I was just gonna say quick uh, dumb things, but no, I, Alex, you're so right, because we even kind of talked about Unforced this week. Maybe he's like, I don't know, I need to go to the store and fill this hut up with something. And I love your kind of self self-loathing angle that he just might feel this is what i need to do i'm a jedi in isolation with this mission i deserve this cave and maybe at some point there's some self-forgiveness and self-healing I, I think that's going to be kind of one of those uh core themes so i like that and i also like the picture painting that there's someone in chalman's cantina that one night kenobi got really drunk and just told the entire story to <laughs> they don't believe him. they're like this guy said he that you know darth vader guy in the whole of <laughs> It, it, it did something with, like I, I i like that i like that self-care kenobi get yourself a hut get yourself a hut you deserve it yeah i mean i think i think it's so important that in revenge of the sith he he does say i failed you to anakin i think he does he feels responsible he believed in anakin and he he whatever choices anakin made obi-wan wasn't there uh to be the father figure that he needed to guide him away from that I yeah. love I, I know some people aren't sure about Revenge of the Sith and think uh, Kenobi is a jerk for not just finishing Anakin. But I think that's this great torture point of I didn't do either. I didn't save Anakin and I didn't finish Vader like I claimed I would, like I claimed mm -hmm. I could. I will do what I must. And then he kind of didn't. Right. I think in his heart of heart. Right. He's like, what? I, I severed his limbs and he was on fire. I mean, he's done. Right. But yeah. he's got to believe on a part of him, too. Of like, but I couldn't bring myself to do it definitively in one slice and there's no Vader. I didn't do that. And I didn't save Anakin. Uh, so I think there's just is a, a lot of torture. And I, we were talking about this on our review, so I'll keep this real short, but I think he goes to Tatooine with the knowledge that I, I have two missions. Look over Luke. He could be the new hope uh, commune, learn to be one with the force, learn to talk to Qui-Gon, learn to, to be around after I die to help others. And it's, I think it's one of those stories where, you know what you need to do intellectually and emotionally you lose it. You're like, I know this makes sense, but I can't feel it anymore. And I think this story is going to be about him believing in those missions again. And that's, that's what gives him purpose and power to go like, I have been re restored. I believe in these missions. Now they are worthy sitting in a cave, watching over the next hope is a Jedi Knight. It's the greatest thing I could do in making himself feel that again. I, I want to ask the two of you because someone asked us and uh, we, we answered it in our own Q&A today. Do you think Obi-Wan at this point in the series or the timeline, do you think he thinks that Anakin's dead or does he know about Darth Vader? Is he going to find out that he didn't finish the job basically in this series? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have no idea. Obviously, he knows. Everybody points out the hologram where where Anakin is called Vader. So if he hears the word Vader, he can he can yeah, it's like that's that's the horrible nickname that my apprentice took when he went evil. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I can see them going either way. Personally, I kind of like the idea that he's aware that like that much evil and that and somebody was that close to if he's spending any time meditating that he would feel that rot in the Force and recognize it, recognize yeah. it in a way like th that's. That's my brother, but a horrible version of my brother. I, I think he'd feel it. Yeah, I think he'd feel it. I wouldn't mind seeing 
if if it happens within the the confines of these six episodes of seeing that 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 turmoil, seeing the the the, the confusion, the anger, the rage, the doubt, the, the even more guilt. Oh my God! I now I even more things to be worried about uh, on on you and you and's face as an actor. But there's something about especially that line, which I do we do believe is kind of edited of of the uh, you know uh, we lost uh, stay hidden that whole sequence there. But like if he's had to live with that too, at some point he does know, and he's still trying to, you know, we meet him in a cave and uh, along with all the other deeper things going on, the shame, the guilt is, is this like, I want to just go make something right. I want to go finish the job and I can't, but I know he's out there, but I can't go do it. Like that would add an extra layer of angst that I'd love to see uh, Kenobi have. I would like to see him have like a slow motion vision of himself leaping through the window of Padme's apartment. Like, Where's that Obi Wan Kenobi gone? <laughs> the one who would claim that that's not a part of our mandate, but still just jump through the window when the chance presented it. I can't jump through windows anymore. We are definitely going into overtime here. We 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 had said we'd kind of be wrapping up at five, but I do want to get to some of these questions here. Uh, Chew Broccoli just has a hot take. Hot take, but Padme and Anakin's love theme may be the best song in Star Wars, uh, and no one here would disagree, right? Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> that's great. A good one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the real Red Five, I like how not only Bail Organa uses acts of compassion to find Jedi, but the Inquisitors do as well. Uh, most uh, Disney Plus shows have a theme. Is Obi-Wan's uh, PTSD? Mm. I think there's something with that. I think there's something with that. Joseph, what do you think? Uh, the, the, the trauma, recovery, redemption, we talked a lot about that on our review. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. We've been talking about Anakin, but it's also like, you know, his whole way of life and almost everyone he knew or grew up with <laughs> is yep. gone. I think he's got a lot of uh, uh, PTSD and he did also actually fight a war. I'm sure if if they won the Clone Wars, he'd probably be like, I got a lot of things to think through <laughs> that yeah. didn't go great for me. So I totally buy that. Yeah, yeah. love it. Love it. Uh, Molly? No, I, I agree with everything. Cool. <laughs> Alex, do you have a hot take? Is there another song better than the Anakin Padme love scene? Or do you want to talk about Kenobi? Uh, another song that's better? The Asteroid Chase is the best uh, song in Star Wars. <laughs> it's, it's a, that's a bop. That's just the one that gets stuck in your head the most. Uh-huh. I can't help but sing it. I'm like, we'd turn it up, max volume, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the themes or maybe one big theme jumping out of you after that minute and 46 seconds we all were treated to on Wednesday morning? Um, hmm. I, I guess the the one that I was hoping it would be was, I, yeah, kind of the self care. Get yourself a hut. Like you can, you deserve to be a, a little happier than you're letting yourself be. Uh, love you, that you can idea. do your mission, but you don't have to be miserable. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's like you can contact Yoda in the Force just to chat. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about business. <laughs> Jim Brockley, Brockley comes back. Also, I think that Obi-Wan will best Vader in their fight uh, once uh, he finds out he's Anakin is uh, his truest turn. Still being the student of the master. Um, yeah, this fight, uh, without going too much details, we, we know there's going to be some kind of confrontation. We know kind of how things end up uh, nine years later in A New Hope on the Death Star. Any thoughts, Molly, on what you might want at this point? Want is a dangerous word as a Star Wars fan, but what you, what you, what you might want out of these confrontations? Yeah, I don't know. This is a tough one because, you know, this is a, a, a big event that everybody is really looking forward to and ev everyone probably has pictured it differently. Um, I guess I picture it as them eventually, towards the end of the season, having this fight. But maybe Vader ends up in some form or fashion trapped and Obi-Wan gets a chance to talk to him, like, not face to face, but to t try to talk to some sense into him and Vader is like incapacitated in some way. Like, I think, I don't know that one is going to best the other one exactly. Right. Uh, but I just want them to have like a good heart to heart or as best of a heart to heart that Vader can have at this point with Obi-Wan. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's going to be that. interesting. That's great. That's great. Love that. Love it. Yeah. Love the good. I love a good one on one conversation before the blades come out, too. Uh, Alex, any, any hopes at this point? That's, Molly went all deep and thematic. And I was over here like, I wonder what their fighting style is going to be like now. Because, <laughs> like, we, we had them, Obi Wan and Anakin, that the battle of the heroes is so fast and frantic. And then, of course, the, the episode four fight is like, the one that everyone's always trying to retcon into a reason for why it's slow. And it's like, right. no, it's just, that's just movie making. But yeah. I am curious to see how Vader fights now. <laughs> is yeah. is he going to be 
like Anakin? Is he going to be just like lots of heavy, powerful swings? That's where my mind went. <laughs> Maybe Obi-Wan's so Molly, like, I know Molly, all your tricks. Yeah, Molly, thanks for making us sound a lot deeper. <laughs> you, 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 you take those two things and squish them together. I would love a moment where after one of the fights or something where Kenobi's just like, my hips hurt. This is not like the old days. <laughs> I gotta yeah. slow my fighting style down. Like Look, I, yeah, a lot of foley of cracks. I think like there's like just slightly under the hum and clash of lightsabers. There's just all the pops and cracks from Kenobi's back <laughs> added in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think uh, my this might be my Kenobi bias, but I think in the two major uh, lightsaber battles we we've seen, Kenobi's won. He he beat him physically because he knew Anakin better on Mustafar, and I think. He won on uh, on the Death Star. I think Vader didn't even understand what the fight was about. Um, yeah. So I like the idea that Kenobi uh, and Vader could at least... Uh, like Vader might be physically more powerful than him at this point, but I like the idea that Kenobi can at least kind of fight him to a standstill because of how well he knows him. The thing I'm really interested in, I love what Molly is saying about maybe even they get separated. I, I It would be interesting to see if it could be set up right in, in the sort of plot mechanics ways, but if it becomes a point where Kenobi can choose... I can keep chasing after Vader and be all about stopping him. I'm not going to turn him back. I can keep chasing him or I can look to the future and I can go guard the hell out of the future. Nice. And that, that might be kind of like a choice of like, yep, yeah, if I want my life to be all about killing Vader, maybe I could do it, but I want to be about what's next. I want to be about mm -hmm. hope. Yeah, especially if you're bringing in just by using Duel of the Fates and we know, you know, what that Qui-Gon fight represents to the larger story in Star Wars. If you're looking for a theme in that kind of fight, I love that idea of of, of Anakin maybe, have, or excuse me, uh, Obi-Wan Obi having to give up some sort of uh, perceived uh, uh, victory for what is now the bigger stakes. That That's a big important theme that could emerge in a fight or you know man, vader's always like hey the last time we met you were you were uh, you were the master i was a learner i get it not not anymore and you know maybe kenobi's like toying with him like you're still a kid you're still a kid you're still a kid there's just being dramatic yeah <laughs> always always dramatic <laughs> yeah, i up. want i want yeah, like one of the me. last things that obi-wan says to vader in this series to just be some kind of really amazing foreshadowing for luke you know, coming back and bringing this whole thing full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Kenobi, are we getting a Millennium Falcon flying in a cameo or a Han and Chewie in the background of the Cantina cameo? I mean, it's not unrealistic. It's not unrealistic, right? Uh, or, or, or I always forget the, the solo line timeline is the one timeline I'm going to need to watch an Alex Damon uh, video on again. So I'm trying to think of it right now myself. <laughs> yeah. Quick thoughts here. Uh, Joseph cameo. Yay. Nay. Uh, no, I think, I think probably no on the, on the Falcon and Han. I think they are aware in Kenobi, the risk of too many things that are just kind of for fun in, in yeah. the background. I think they're not going to be too many. I watch. I'll be dead wrong. I don't think there's going to be the Ponda Bob or Dr. Evazin. I think especially with that, <laughs> With that article that came out where they're like, we really, really went back and forth about Vader. I, I think that there's not going to be something as huge as just like Han Solo in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that idea. Uh, uh, Alex? I, <laughs> you you saying Ponda Baba cracked me up. Uh, I, since we're throwing out just like wild, I, I don't think Han and Chewie will appear or the Falcon. I do think that it's possible. I think the timeline could potentially match up. They might be with Jabba at that point. Uh, I want to throw something to you guys that we thought of uh, yesterday when we were doing our Q&A. And I, I think it's so on the nose, but I also kind of love it. <laughs> what if Elon Sleaze Pagano was in this? <laughs> what if at some point Obi-Wan runs into the sky and, and he's like, it's you. Like, you saved my life. And the man who changed my years ago. And, and then he becomes an ally for Obi-Wan and helps him out a little bit. Matt Dorn I think that cracks still the whole acting. show. That's what <laughs> that's what truly turns Obi-Wan of like, remember when I used to make a difference? <laughs> I was like, I said that and I was like, that's really dumb. But I yeah. also kind of want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't turn it turns out i mean we all want dexter to show up a lot of people in chat saying dexter's opened up yeah. uh, an establishment on dayu mm -hmm. uh, look, for, for my money it could play like in oceans 11 when carl reiner is uh you know undercover trying to get into the vault uh and and a guy from his past is like soul soul hey it's me <laughs> and like like kenobi's like it's bet my name's ben i don't know who this guy's talking about <laughs> that's you were the jedi that saved my you told me to death sticks like I, I don't know what i don't know who he is i don't know who he is 
the cameo I really want because it, it, he's kind of a big one who's never had the cameo of recent in live action. I want Bosk just leaning on the bar at Chalman's and uh, Kenobi walks by and there's a double take of like, hey, isn't that that? Hey, what? Like, yeah, <laughs> I love that idea. Oh, man, we, we, we eventually have to wrap this show up, but don't worry. We got more on the way. Jack Cole says Vader doesn't know Ahsoka is uh, still alive. Don't swallow the apprentice. Uh, correct. Uh, so there's no chance she is showing up right. No chance in terms of Vader storyline, but we got those green birds. It may or may not be a pack of converees. I don't know. Uh, Alex and I were even texting the other day. Uh, the idea of Ahsoka in some shape, way, shape, or form. I know there's some comments about Kathleen Kennedy saying, eh, there's some Mandoverse stuff, and then there's that timeline and this. It's it's not out of the realm of possibility, right, Joseph? No, I mean, I think it's possible. I think there, for me, there's really like whether there's room for it in a six episode structure. And obviously the Kenobi started off as a film and they've got a lot more room. But I think this has always been structured as a story about Kenobi that I think is going to have, even though it's not a movie, I think it's going to have much more of a movie act like structure, like some of the MCU shows where first two episodes are, are first act, then second act, then third act kind of structure. Whereas Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett are so much more episodic and there's room to have it be, this is the one where Mando meets so-and-so. Right. So I, I think I go more to story structure than um, canon logic. I feel like maybe a vision, maybe a flashback. But I kind of feel like Ahsoka actually actively running into Kenobi at this point, even though it's possible timeline-wise and would be interesting, just doesn't feel like there's quite room in what I assume the structure is going to be. Yeah, I agree that we always talk about asking the why. Star Wars wants to ask why and why would that work? And yeah, it, it seems like they might be on two separate journeys and them being separated has even more value at this point in their timelines, I think. Uh, so I agree with Joseph there. Uh, Alex, Molly, any different thoughts there? Uh, we talked about this a little bit last night on uh, Whiskey Jedi, mm -hmm. where we, we realized that she has never in live action said, I am the Padawan of Anakin Skywalker. So people know who Ahsoka is is uh people like my parents at this point uh they, they just watch live action stuff but i wonder at some point if they're going to make that revelation so i'm like maybe in a flashback they would recast ahsoka and she would run up and be like master and anakin would be like ahsoka like that could be a fun little revelation uh for for people that don't know but no i don't think that ahsoka and obi-wan are going to run into each other after order 66 yeah, I think flashback is a lot more likely in this case. And we talked about, you know, maybe she's played by a younger actress. Maybe they get Ashley Eckstein to to add her voice in there a little bit. Uh, that would be a, a nice touch. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, there's the, now we have this world of possibilities. Thanks to Disney Plus, which you can subscribe to. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Michael McCarthy, I call him Detective McCarthy on a lot of my other shows just because he has a good detective like name. I've seen some who are vehemently against Luke in The Last Jedi praising what we assume Kenobi is struggling with. I'm curious why they're okay with one but not the other when both were dealing with very similar guilt and trauma. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, big question. Thanks for Super Chat, Michael, there. Important uh, question. A lot of it just might be what people expected or, or wanted to see of Luke at that point in his life or in just another story, which I think is always fair. It's a fair starting point to go into the sequel uh, era with. And it, it went when it, if it different direction. It, and so maybe it doesn't come off as, uh, I want to say making sense for Luke. I think it does make sense for Luke. But, yeah, they want a little different take on it where it kind of makes sense for Kenobi this time. Am I off base there, Joseph? No, I, I think so. Um, I, you know, obviously, I think it's up to just lots of individual people if they feel yeah. that way. But I, I totally get um, what Detective McCarcel is saying, that I think you, that you certainly could run into Star Wars fans who feel like they have had a relationship with Luke where they imagine him to have always been the hero and not mm -hmm. to have had this moment of defeat. Whereas when we meet Obi-Wan Kenobi, we know, like, you've been in the desert for a while, <laughs> you, you crazy old wizard. So I think it's maybe about... Um, some of the uh, expectations that we live with. The the connection that I'm hoping for between Luke and Kenobi is I love this idea of who can get through to people that obviously people who fall to the dark side, uh, we've seen you know them uh, be able to make the brave choice to come back, but it's all a lot about who is making the ask and when. And I think because Kylo blames Luke, Luke knows he's not the one. And I think because Vader at least partially blames Kenobi, I think Kenobi's going to learn, like, I 
I it's certainly I can't get through to him and, and come to believe that he can't be gotten through to at all. I think that Star Wars poetry of the master who failed the student who went to the dark side is not going to be the one who's going to have the best luck getting through to him. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Molly, has Alex ever gotten through to you? You know, he failed you many times. You know? <laughs> uh, on occasion, if he's if he's lucky, he'll get through to me. Uh, <laughs> I think it's important to remember that like we we know the end of Obi-Wan's story when we see Luke at the end of The Force Awakens and in The Last Jedi, we don't know the end of his story yet. So that probably has a lot to do with how people feel about the character. When we see Luke at the end of The Force Awakens, like literally any anything could happen after that. You know, he's in his robes. He has this very dramatic moment anything could he could pull a star destroyer out of the sky that we just don't see right off camera <laughs> so yeah. I, I think that uh, is a big part of it too i love that, I love that. good stuff alex yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I that's alex i apologize alex <laughs> I, I think that's exactly right is that when we saw the end of the force awakens we were like who knows what we're gonna see with luke and then I remember being like a little frustrated with the luke that we were getting just like why are you acting this way man and then the second we found out why, uh, where we saw the origin of Kylo Ren, basically, I was like, oh, like that. It, it hit me. It hit me hard. I accepted it. And I, I think a lot of people were just upset that that that's the direction they chose to go. Whereas with Kenobi, it's like, yeah, obviously, that's how he feels. Yeah, like yeah. we know the starting point and the end point. So the middle point's a lot easier to guess. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Well mm. said. A force center well said across the board. <laughs> uh, all over the live comment, we need to see Jabba being carried around the streets in Kenobi, something like that, or maybe Mayor Mock Shays. Uh, <laughs> Alden's got a 14 tweet thread about it. He's got there right now, right? I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I love that. Yeah, I love, uh, you know, I, I don't think we don't, I don't think we need Jabba. I don't think we're going to spend a lot of time on Tatooine, but, uh, you know, you know, Jabba being around, uh, walking through, I'm okay with that. I don't know. Amazing that Jira is still alive. That's that's what I'm looking for. Jira, Jira, Jira. <laughs> uh, Molly, you a big fan of uh, Mayor Mokshay's? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I I love his stuff in Book of Boba Fett. I would love to see him back. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, they I, they probably spent a lot of money on that animatronic puppet wearable thing, whatever that was. I still don't really know how they did that. So uh, uh, yeah, use it again. Give him a new. Yeah, outfit. I mean, <laughs> a good close up of those Athorian feet, right? <laughs> his cute little feet hopefully <laughs> not dangling yeah <laughs> uh my favorite librarian saying this is fun more live episodes in this uh, like this place uh chris i we aim to please and i i aim to please you personally good friend of mine from back in my stand-up days anakin crespin says uh, so good to see your faces uh these are the faces here uh you were all like an illumination of jedi speaking mm -hmm. of jedi anyone else hoping to see quinlan voss and obi-wan not too skeptical, uh, skeptical about it after Cobb mm -hmm. Anthony was then. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look, we love Quinlan Voss around Force Center. I mean, the big Lebowski Jedi. Come on, this this could work. Uh, uh, Molly, Alex, you want this guy to to show up at any point? Uh, any point. And again, I'm trying to track, trying to track uh, his life right with with not spoiling Dark Disciples. So probably we don't. Not. We don't. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to not know right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if. I don't know if I want to see a Jedi that we already know. It's, it's possible that we could see other Jedi, especially with that shot of like the Jedi symbol etched into the wood uh, somewhere that could be like, hey, there are Jedi this way. Or if you're a Jedi, it's safe here. Um, I just don't know that he's the right one to show up here. I agree with that. Yeah, I think I'd uh, as much as I would love to see him, I would rather give Quinlan Voss some uh, some elbow room and have him be featured larger, either in his own show, which I would absolutely love, or comic or or book show first. Um, I am starting to wonder with the the setup of the trailer if another Jedi happened to be on Tatooine and couldn't help himself and did an act of compassion, and Kenobi's like, "Great, thanks, <laughs> other Jedi." <laughs> I don't want that to be Quinlan Voss though, because I I do. This is kind of it is dark. But I want to see some Jedi go. You know, Kenobi can't. And I think it, it's yeah. such a great stake of escalation for him of like the few remaining Jedi. And he has to see, you know, one of them fall. Yeah, no, there was yeah. obsession with 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 Reva described as ruthless, uh, ambitious, all those kind of things. And and 
to to put her over even uh, more strongly in the beginning of her taking out some kind of other Jedi. Yeah, it could work. I, you know, chances of it on Tatooine, I don't know, probably slim. But yeah, I, I really kind of understand and agree with what you're saying there, Jess. What do you think about Quinlan? I cut you off, Alex. I apologize. Oh, no, it's okay. I, I, Quinlan does have that connection with Obi-Wan where they were friends, but I totally agree with you that I want him to have space. Yeah. He is big enough, I think, to get his own novel or comic or something mm -hmm. uh, that he's been teased in the comics several times. So I'm kind of hoping for a Quinlan comic. Mm -hmm. um, but I also agree that I, I kind of think in, in my trailer breakdown, I speculated that Obi-Wan does something a little bit too big to attract the inquisitors but we do see the inquisitors going after someone else and we see like mock shays we see little legs dangling into the frame where i'm like <laughs> maybe another jedi just accidentally right. did something <laughs> to draw the inquisitors here and yeah mm -hmm. like official mock oh. shays <laughs> <laughs> and now obi-wan is like well crap i i gotta get out of here and lead them away from luke I, I do think yeah. that's a huge possibility. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely love that there. Uh, and it, we, we even just released our When Star Wars Gets Edgy conversation today on, on Force Center on the podcast feed. And, uh, you know, dangling feet's pretty edgy. Pretty edgy. A <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, Rodin with this very generous. Wow. Four of you and Jennifer uh, truly make this fandom such a better place. And thank you for that. Hope you and everyone watching have a great weekend. Look, we really appreciate the words. I don't think any four of us and, and Jennifer included the five that we don't set out to do that. We just uh, are who we are, Star Wars fans. And and we're so happy that uh, some of you are along for the ride, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, <laughs> Gregory, why wing and Obi-Wan? Uh, you know, <laughs> why? I, I, why, I, yeah, Ken? I feel a little tinked at you. Tinked? Tinked? That's what I say to my dog when we go putty. <laughs> teed off at you uh i don't know about it. I, I yes obi-wan steals a y-wing and gets off of dayu with a y-wing i would love ken I, you, you're such a diehard y-wing guy and i love that in the video games they're the ones like it's gonna take forever to the, for this to get shot down because it's so tough and also so bleeping <laughs> slow would yeah. you like a scene <laughs> where obi-wan is desperately trying to escape and the y-wing is just going comically slow like the star field is barely changing and obi-wan's like <laughs> I hate flying. I hate yeah. this garbage ship. As, as someone who, you know wants what? Yes, <laughs> I yeah. would love it if someone in canon called the Y wing a garbage ship. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a reason to hate flying even more. My EOP goes faster than this. <laughs> as someone who once had to respond to a raging fire in a golf cart, and actually at one point my feet were outside pushing it faster. Uh, I do want to see the scene, and it still gets the job done. Thomas Harper and I are going to corner you in an alley at Star Wars Celebration Alley. <laughs> finally settle this for all there uh ethan uh, ethan uh, truman is the question here i'm excited to see luke's life with owen and baru uh, i totally see owen and baru as the ben and may parker to luke's life um luke to luke's peter excuse me uh he learned goodness from them uh, i this we've been talking about justice for uh, uncle owen a bit over here we think uh uh just highlighting uh bonnie, bonnie ps's uh and baru is a great thing too as well we're not expecting a ton of uh time with them i don't think but I like this idea. Uh, Alex, what do you think about seeing a little bit more of uh, Luke uh, actually being raised by them? I, yeah, like, I don't want a ton of Luke in this show, but I do want a ton of Uncle Owen if we can get it. I, I don't think he's going to be the focus or Baru. I'm glad mm -hmm. they're both back, but mm -hmm. that still of Owen staring down the third sister, I was like, yep, this, this got me the most hyped. And I think it's such a good chance to explore Owen more because he comes off so gruff in A New Hope. And then when you see when you read the comics and anything else uh, outside of the films, you just see that everything he's doing is because he loves Luke and wants to protect him. And so I want them to communicate that. And Baru also has some really cool stuff. And I'll just, you. You mentioned Queen Soap, and Baru is in it, and she's got some cool stuff in it. Mm. Oh, wow. Like, there, there's some good great. stuff to Baru, so I'd, I'd really, really like to see them explore that. Oh, that. that's great. Look at that. All right, Molly, what do you think about that? Any other drop morsels of, uh, you know, excitement you can drop on us here with the Queen Soap? Oh, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I finished it last night. <laughs> he, he just finished it. Uh, but yeah, everything Alex said about the uh, Uncle Owen getting getting more from him. You know, Deborah Chow said, "Thank goodness George uh, had 
Joel Edgerton uh, cast as him. So I think I think we're going to get some really good stuff with him. I, was, Look, I real quick, I was like, I didn't just break NDA, did it? No, I'm good. <laughs> and I, 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 hope, I hope we hear more from uh, Aunt Baru about what is it, the cheese that she wanted to make, or is it cheese or <laughs> yeah. bread? Yeah, oh, I think yeah. it was cheese. cheese. Yeah, yeah. No, we talked about it a, a lot on our breakdown. I love that knowing that Owen has, uh, you know, looked into the eyes of the dark side that he's trying to keep Luke safe from. That's a little justice. Uh, for grumpy old uh, old Owen, but I really, uh, you know, to the questions point, I would really love to see a little bit of brew, and I think you could do it with just a short amount of time. I think that's kind of there to be inferred if you want to. It's headcanon for me that she raised Luke with such kindness. Luke has such a good heart. I think that's why he breaks so bad when he fails Kylo, because he is such a good guy, and he can't stand that he slipped for a minute and failed, and I think a lot of what's so great about him is how he is such a kind, sincere guy and wants to do right. And I would love to see just even just tender shots from far away uh, mm -hmm. of them together to make you feel that. I really think Baru is one of the unsung heroes of the galaxy because of the love she gave Luke. Yeah. I lo yeah. I love that. And, and, and um, she just that, that, uh, that mother, energy that brew has which we, we've talked about and is sometimes lacking in star wars and getting a chance to explore it a little bit more continuing a little bit of the legacy of shmi right the goodness that i believe shmi put in anakin's heart and brew putting in there in there as well i would love a, a deleted scene from the last jedi where uh, mark hamill's like i let baru down i let her down man just really worked up about that i wouldn't mind that <laughs> is mark hamill on cameo you you can ask yeah, for that on uh, cameo. Maybe, you know <laughs> <laughs> let me text. Let me text. Let's text Nathan. Let's see if Nathan can, can get it. For <laughs> next time. Uh, Brian says, Thanks for the awesome Friday evening. Brian, thank you. BC Tiller, we appreciate your support. The CGH, I love this one. Greetings to all strange humans in the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that there as well. Tom Strand checking in here. I listen to all y'all's content whenever I'm stressed. Thanks so much for all you do. I'd like to give a shout out to my awesome girlfriend, Nam, who has been so great in joining me. I love of <laughs> Star Wars. That's wonderful. Uh, Joseph and I talk often about our partners, Sarah, for Joseph, Grace, for me. You two are, are out and about as this uh, uh, power couple of Star Wars. My words. You're not saying about yourself. Um, uh, take me back to the beginning when, when, when you guys uh, were, were starting to date. What, what was the first Star Wars conversation you ever had together? I think it had to have been about um, Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. I, yeah, that's I, I remember playing a game against uh someone who's still a very close friend of ours jeremy uh he was like oh i like star wars and trivia and i was like oh me too and like for whatever reason molly or someone else at, at your apartment had star wars trivial pursuit and we were like let's play and uh i i started the game and jeremy didn't get to go <laughs> like it, it was like I, I forget who else was playing with us but you started playing and we all just went what, do you know every answer to every question in this game? And that was the first time I realized that, that yes, yes, he did. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So you won the game, Alex, with no one else taking a turn with, with like uh, firm Trivial Pursuit rules. You you did it all? I think so. I might be exaggerating. It was at a party. We, so we probably I'm not just gonna... gave up and we're like, all right, we get it. <laughs> we get it. We get it. That is I'm not really, gonna really I'm not gonna great. promise that's how it went down, but in my <laughs> like hazy I, I was oh my god, that was 14 years ago, probably at least. Uh well all, that, Alden that's pointing out that it's a, a fitting backstory is so great. I, it's something that is a writer my ears pick up uh, perk up for is uh does somebody have a life that would actually be easy to translate to screen? And like, yeah, thank you guys for having like if somebody ever wants to write your love story, like you don't have to make it up, it's yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> right there i love that i love that yeah grace and i's first date was her kicking my ass in lord of the rings trivia your pursuit twice and the second time i never even got to answer one question she just nice. went around the board and filled up that little <laughs> trivia pursuit pie i knew i knew then uh Al alden diaz says i want the origin story of baru's dedham jacket birthday gift from kenobi i like that little, little subplot i got you a gift baru <laughs> <laughs> we need more denim in star wars 
I, we do. I, I do agree with that. Alex Hudson, I just want to thank you for all your content. Really appreciate it. Some great live questions coming in there. Uh, Doom Slayer, are we going to get uh, a, a gallery for the Book of Boba Fett? I would assume, I would hope so, because I need some concept art on Grogu napping with Ranky the Rancor. <laughs> I love it so mm-hmm. much. The Hawkeye one came out like a week or two ago, so it just seems like they're letting it breathe a little more instead of dropping yeah. the the making of like the week after it's over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love we're gonna it. have some time in between what uh, Moon Knight and Kenobi, so maybe then. Yeah, I hope at Star Wars Celebration they have like a weird little swing contraption set up, so like one person can cosplay as Luke and like just give you a little ride. Uh, in hop you along the way he does to Grogu. <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts of the whole show. Just a little hop while we're talking. Yeah, like keep up, keep it, keep up. Keep up. <laughs> I'm not going to slow down for you. <laughs> right. Well, uh, we have uh, come to the end of the program. This has been, uh, you know, 30 minutes of bonus time. You, you, you know, Alex Molly, you know, you do a live stream. You're, we're so blessed to have people uh, even remotely interested in what we have to say. And so when people want to come hang out with us and support the show, it means a lot to us. So we, we definitely want to do a little overtime to catch you all. Um, thank you so much. First of all, uh, Joseph, we got to say thank you to Alex and Molly for coming on the show here absolutely thank you both it's always so great uh to chat with you about star wars and to just hang out with you as people and we're looking forward uh for doing both at star wars celebration yeah james farther with this one still on a little unbelievable that we're getting a show headline by ewan and hayden with the inquisitors no less is always incredible to see different eras of star wars woven together i absolutely agree with that one there as i always say and have said for a, a few years now it's a great time to be a star wars fan uh, we are, uh, as we always do here on uh, our shows, generally our news shows, we like to close out the show with highlighting uh, charities, charities of choice, things to uh, maybe plug into if you'd like to uh, in, in, in the world at large. A lot going on here. I'll throw a couple out here, uh, Joseph, if you want as well. And then Alex and Molly, if you have anything on your mind, feel free to do it here. We love uh, highlighting this. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my grandmother, born and raised in Kiev, uh, what's going on in, in uh, Ukraine is uh, very close to my heart right now. A place you can donate to help is uh, globalgiving.org, the Ukraine crisis relief fund a uh, good place to help humanitarian efforts there we also want to highlight the amadala initiative for quality texas great group of uh, fans podcasters creators just uh, people with compassion in their hearts uh, wanting to raise funds and awareness for equality texas and the equality texas foundation that's something we stand behind here as well uh, joseph am i missing anything from you here today uh, no, just a quick shout out, uh, as I often do on the podcast, uh, for an organization called Vote Forward. Uh, they've been doing this for a couple of years where you can print out kind of a, a basic letter to voters. And then you just write in why you personally vote. You're not encouraging people to vote in any particular way. You're just encouraging them to use their power to vote. And they have followed up and done research and shown that this uh, helps increase get the vote out. So uh, I enjoy doing that because it helps me use my power in the way that I can to encourage other people to use their power. So if you're interested in that, you can go to their website site votefwd.org absolutely alex molly anything on your minds uh i was gonna also bring up the amadala, amadala initiative because uh we were a part of that uh group of star wars creators talking about that too they are on twitter at amadala helps and if you go check out their twitter you can see all the other creators that are involved and like the the raffles and the the live streams and all that stuff that they are doing over there Doing great work, doing great work, right? Uh, Star Wars uh, teaches compassion and empathy, Alex, not just uh, destroying (laughs) Y-Wings. Fine, Ken, fine. (laughs) There you go. Uh, This has been a lot of fun. In fact, we even have some pre-selected questions I didn't get to, which means, Joseph, I think we're going to have to do this again. We'll even tell Jennifer, fire up that camera. We're going to have some fun here. Yeah, we will absolutely do this again. This has been uh, such a great blast. It's been really, really fun. We we get to hear from uh, listeners in Discord and on social media, but it's been really fun. Yeah, as we're going and talking to hear people's, you know, uh, feelings about Luke and Obi-Wan and Baru, it's been really great to uh, feel that interaction live and in the moment. So thank you all uh, for watching, listening, commenting, all that great stuff. Absolutely. So that is it. So for uh, all the Y-Wings in the galaxy and Aunt Baru and that uh, dessert dinner she's making for all of us in a denim jacket. We'll see you next time here on Force Center Live. (laughs) 